Here's something I do have a problem with, racism. Y'all know me, I don't get into the race conversation very often. Um, I'm more highlight it and point at it than get from it and be in it. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't like to get up in there. Why? I'm gonna tell you the truth. My experience has showed me that uh, what Andrew Tate is about to say is more real than not. Um, racism exists, duh. Uh, is, does racism exist to the level that we talk about it? Nope. Um, does racism exist in certain areas, certain groups, uh, certain demographics more so than others? Yes. Let's have this conversation right now. Andrew Tate, kick it off. When a black billionaire meets a white billionaire, do you think there's any racism? Do you think they care? He's a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. Both our yachts are in Monaco. He's from Algeria, you stole all the gold. I'm a stock market, whatever. There's no racism. The racism's for the poor people. Because if you keep the poor people divided, they can't wake up long enough to do what I did and read about how money works. Because if they do that, we're in a big trouble, right? So then the slaves will wake up in order to deprogram the slaves. So you have to convince the slaves that it's not the monetary system fault that you're broke. It's not the monetary system's fault that you continue to work for a set number of dollars and the price of houses just keep going up and up and up. It's the white man's fault or the black man's fault or the Asian people's fault. Someone else's fault. They have to keep the poor people fighting amongst each other, but it's if the poor people all unite, then it's much harder to control us. Okay. So basically he's saying the poor are the racists. And that'll make you think, say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because I know somebody rich out there watching right now is like, no, no, no. Uh, you know how we say, once the N-word, always the N-word, right? In this country. I don't believe that. You ain't going to tell me who I am. I don't give a damn if 100 people tell me I'm something. I don't believe none of them. <laughs> you know I mean? If 100 people came up to me right now and told me I'm white, do I supposed to believe them? Why? Because it's a lot of them that said it. No, they're all wrong, right? So if everybody says you always going to be an N-word, I'm like, you're all wrong. Oh, watch, they're going to show you. No, bad things happen to everybody. What you mean? They bring down white people too. What is it? They always a white person? <laughs> so miss me with that. If you come up to me, tell me I'm short, I'm giggling. You come up to me telling me I'm tall, I'm like, and? <laughs> like, so that's not the power. Here's the power. Because I am bilingual. I have spoken both languages of have and have not. Right? From the bottom to wherever the hell I am right now. And it's not the top. Trust me, I'm going this weekend to Vegas to hang with some people at the top. <laughs> but I'm up somewhere. I'm up from where I was. Let's go there, right? So I speak both languages, have and have nots. And let me tell you one thing. The higher you go, <laughs> the less black and white you see and the more green. <laughs> Real talk. It's called yacht culture. I've talked about this before. You probably missed that video. It's called yacht culture. I bought a yacht in 2004. Remember, my mom didn't want me to have one, bought it anyway. Uh, my mom died and I used that yacht as therapy. Thank God. Um, and I remember this guy told me about yacht culture because I was just, you know, you're sniffing around in these new frontiers. You're trying to act like you got it. I'm not trying to be hood riffic out there, you know, wearing jeans in the water. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be that guy. I'm trying to learn what yacht culture is. And he broke it down to me. He was like, yeah, you know, here's yacht culture. So you have your slip and you have your boat and everyone just walks by each other's boats, keep them, the doors open and just go in there and have a drink with them and just meet them. I was like, doors open, unlocked, just meet them. I was like, you, he's like, yeah, that's everyone. Else. And I start noticing and looking, everybody, no matter what, no matter what, and I wasn't the only black person out there for y'all. <laughs> I know how y'all think. Uh, but no matter where, young, old, whatever, little kids, come here, come here. Everybody was open. Now, why is that, right? Oh, because they ain't got nothing to worry about. They got money. Come on, y'all. I thought more money, more problems. So make up your mind. So let's get to the beginning of this. Because I understand there could be some of this conversation of, well, they got money, so ignorance is bliss, right? They're ignorant to all the day-to-day -day problems that everyone else has because they can buy away some of those issues or they're above that with their money. But let's go all the way back to the, when the racism was introduced to this country from a black man's perspective, right? And it's always been since slavery, I'm an N-word, and from slavery to this point present, um, the racism still exists. Even though I've never experienced racism, me, me. Now, you can tell me your story, and I'm not going to negate it, but you're not going to also put your story on me, because my story is going to actually deter the conversation, or let's just say detour it to a different place. Just haven't experienced it. Whatever. All right. 
But there's always been this conversation, no matter what side, if you've experienced it or not, class or race. So what was behind slavery, right? Remember Martin Luther King switched it up, went from civil rights, what is it, civil rights to silver rights? Stop talking about how you treat me and start talking about how you're paying me, taking care of me, hooking me up, bringing me in a part of ownership, partnership, pow! That's how it went, right? So class to race. And I've always looked at this conversation in such an interesting way because they're interdependent. They both exist, but at times it sways one way or the other. So when you talk about slavery, typically what you taught in the LA Unified School District or wherever you went to public school, private school, is that all because they were black, they were slaves, right? That's how I learned it. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Slavery existed before America. Okay, whatever. Yeah, they were just other white people take, um, and, and making sure they enslaved black people all across the world before America, right? That's what that was, right? Then you look again, you're like, wait a minute. It was, it was black people enslaving black people too. What? And you're like, am I on the internet? <laughs> am I in a rabbit hole? You're like, black people did it too? They did it first? Wait a minute, they showed other people how to do it too? They rounded up us and sold us to America? Black people? Africans? Right? Y'all all know it. We all know it. Anyway, so that makes it say, hmm, how much of it is race and how much of it is class? So to Andrew Tate's point, he's saying, look, racism is for poor people because it's a class issue, not so much a race issue. Interesting, because there are a lot of poor white people, a lot of poor black people, a lot of poor everybody, right? And then I notice, and this is from experience, this is my data-driven experience, that race is a louder conversation from where I'm from than where I'm at. Man, my backyard looked way different growing up. And it wasn't even a backyard, it was our gully, we called it, but basically the parking lot. Our parking lot, my grandma had a backyard in Compton. Um, our backyard, dog, us, us. I'm going to say it again. Nope. And Auntie Gloria and John. Remember Uncle John and Auntie Gloria, the two uh, white people that my grandmother adopted for extra money and taking care of them um, in her back in her back home. She had a duplex. That's why I look at race different. I knew two white people, elderly white people that needed me. Like I'm a little black dude. And, and these white people are like, can you help me? And I'm like, Wait a minute, everybody tell me that white people don't need black people. <laughs> everybody tell me I'm less than you, and it's, you know? So it was just weird like that. But everybody in my backyard at grandma's house for the barbecue was black. Come over to my house. <laughs> come over to my house if I have a Super Bowl party. I'm still on the fence. Uh, come over to my house if I have a Super Bowl party and tell me what you're gonna see. Hey, 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 hey. It gonna look like some gumbo back there, right? All types of flavors, all types of people. So I, I learned in this world that you follow the money. And everybody's heard that, but we stop following it when our feelings get into it, when our personal experiences make us think different, right? Understood. But if you follow the money, and you're supposed to keep following the money to really explain these moves, we don't look at it like that when we talk about slavery. It was a money grab, bro. It really was, and we know that. Uh, my people, we got caught up in it. Obviously, the short end of the stick. So it's not the background necessarily, ethnicity, race and stuff. It was a money play. Oh, y'all, a part of the money game? Let's do it. Kind of like how we see it in the hood. Going to slang it to your own, no matter what kind. You black, you slang it to your black. You white, you in the white area, you slang it to the white. Ah, let me stop, stop. Don't go too deep. Why do you don't want to go 20 minutes? <laughs> okay. Let me give you an example. Let's, let's make it a little lighter, right? Let's talk sports. Because I'm feeling you, Andrew Tate, what you said there. In sports, when you're balling, like you got the money on the team, you the MVP, you the captain, etc. When you balling, it's not that deep, all the issues, right? It's not that serious. You ever been there? I've been there. Coach is not tripping. Coach tripping, man. Coach tripping. I've never said that. You know why? Because I ain't never been sorry on no team. Well... <laughs> I've never been there. Well, I'm the man. I'm the man, dog. What? Coach ain't tripping. No, coach ain't playing you because you tripping. <laughs> That's the problem, right? Coach don't have it out for you when you the MVP, when you the captain, when you got that dough on the team. Coach ain't got it out for you. You know who says that? All them low rung dudes. All them dudes fighting for reps. All them dudes that may not get it. All them dudes living play by play. 
check by check. Y'all see the parallels? I know y'all do. In life, when you're winning, you don't have all these micro explanations, right? You don't start saying the man and them and they and the system. You're winning. So the same system that's against you is the same system you playing in to try and win and you've seen people win and then what's the issue? Is it you or the system? Because how is the system rigged against you but you can beat the system and win? What you talking about with us? <laughs> well, we got nine black billionaires. Not enough, <laughs> but still. Where's the system on them? Oh, no, no. See, see, Illuminati and the way it worked and then how they got there. It, man, sh stop it. We young with our money out here because of slavery. Stop it. We'll catch up. Well, I don't know about catch up. Uh, we'll have more. They'll have more, too. I don't know about that gap closing. <laughs> the wealth gap's a whole different conversation, and I look forward to having that with y'all. But um, more yacht mentality out there, y'all. Even if you ain't got it like that. It's okay. This I'm just telling you how the game go. I ain't tell you where you got to play. Yacht mentality, not victim mentality. Let's stop blaming. I've lived it. I'm bilingual. I see it for what it is. Uh, and look, because I was on food stamps welfare, the lower you are, the pettier you are. Yep. The smaller you are, the smaller you think, the more micro you into it, the more you're in the minutia, the more you're in the swamp. I've been there. All my family. We all said it. I've heard it. I'm like, Ooh. And then now I'm listening, looking back or sometimes still around it and I'm like huh? yacht mentality it's a whole different animal so tell me what y'all think of what he said what I said what everybody said right what Andrew Tate is talking about and um, is racism a poor person's mentality I mean racism exists everywhere but not to everybody <laughs> I testify um, and y'all look at the news white people get is Donald Trump white? <laughs> I don't, who has the worst? Who has the worst like PR campaign against them? Donald Trump? Who else? Uh, Epstein? Rest in peace. Uh, who else? A lot of white people. <laughs> Some black people too. They try it too. Don't trip, man. It's all BS. Tell me what it is um, in terms of the mentalities. And what mentality do you hold? Let me know what you think about that. And the message. I know a lot of people don't like Andrew Tate. I'm not here for that. Y'all know I'm going to play everybody. If they say something that I'll grab and hold to and I see it's a gem in there or something we can all expound on, we're going to do that. So all you Andrew Tate fans, I'm here for you. I like him. But if y'all don't, I'm here for you too. I like what he said. Let's see what he said to you and let me know what you think.